We have on stage uh, Alan Knabe. So Alan uh, will tell us why are API products so hard? Alan is API project manager at APIable. Hello, Alan, how are you? Hi, Mary, good, yourself? Yeah, uh, nice background. I invite you to share your slide. Right. Okay, here we go. Sharing the screen now. It is a background, right? Or is it real? <laughs> no, that's that's real, Mary. I'm on vacation, right? So you're getting the Finnish countryside. Mosquitoes nice. and all. Okay, so yeah, thank you for being nice there with us. Hey, you're welcome. I, I wouldn't miss it for the world, obviously. Uh, so uh, hopefully not too many mosquitoes get me in the meantime. Okay, guys. So, so like Mehdi just said, I'm here to you know ask this question: Why are API products so hard, right? And then address a little bit some ideas about how we can make them a little bit easier. So, a little bit about myself: I'm Alan Kanabe. Um, I have a few roles, a few different hats, but in this uh, capacity, I'm talking as an API product manager. Uh, I founded a company last year called APIable, and we provide API portals as a service. Uh, there's no point having the best API portal in the world if your API products aren't up to scratch. So we do a lot of work with the API product side as well. I've worked mainly in, in larger enterprises over the last 20 plus years now. Um, so some API experience mainly at Swisscom and uh, Corner in the last uh, five, six, seven years. Uh, also, very proud member now of the API Collective, which was uh, formed over the last year. Uh, it's a group of globally recognized API experts, so go and check those guys out as well. So on with the show. So if we start with that question about, okay, you know, let's address first of all, why we even treat the APIs as products in the first place. So I think the first time we were advised to treat the APIs products was back in about 2015. And uh, we went to visit RPG in, in San Jose, I think it was. Uh, we went with all the developers um, and we had a great time, but we, we talked uh, about the APIs of product paradigm. The developers didn't really get it at that point, right? So the developers were like, guys, they're APIs, you can fix the developers. But you know, after about 12 months of explanation, we kind of got the developers around as well. Gartner have been talking about API products for a long time now as well. Um, 2017, this one was originally published, talking about creating the role of API product manager um, to, to basically steer the products or steer the APIs in a way that's manageable rather than project work, which kind of starts and finishes. But what we're really talking about, and this is like, you know, a theme you'll see coming out in this conference is it's about digital business success. So organizations looking to survive and make more revenue um, going forwards. So, so that's a little bit like the, the reason why. So let's address some of the things about API products that make them hard. And up at first, number one is there is no GUI, right? So it's kind of obvious. Well, maybe if you're new to APIs, it's not so obvious. But generally speaking, you know, apart from like a supporting dashboard or something, there's no GUI, right? Um, which makes APIs abstract by nature, right? So if I think back to um, my childhood, I like to play chess a lot, which is something to, you have to build in, in your head, you have to build the board and where the next pieces are going, et cetera. And it's no surprise I turned out to be a software engineer later in life, right? So I like this kind of abstract, abstract thinking. Um, and many developers do, so they find it easy to work with data in their head and, and see how it's gonna play out. But um, others, you know, maybe more on the business side, for example, don't find that so easy. And this is some of the, uh, this is like one of the biggest problems with the API. It's hard to agree on the decision maker. So it's maybe a little bit more of a controversial one. Um, if you ask anybody, they always say, okay, developer is the decision maker. Um, but we also have a lot of business roles in there as well, right? So um, not every company uh, has gone the way that, you know, Twitter, Leo uh, and Jeff envision the future. Um, I think we're still a few years off and we've still got like more traditional companies where a lot of the decisions are made by the uh, the business people and they're not asking their developers yet. So, so we have this kind of like 
situation where who do we ask, right? Who is the decision maker in the organization? Um, if we if we look at this quote from from Ash, that's one of my favorite ones. He really explains it like a customer is someone who pays for your product to use it does not. And I think what we see nowadays is that a lot of the time the developer um, acts as like this user, uh, and the customer is then someone within your organization who who has a credit card uh, or or is able to pay for it. Now, I, I think what we're kind of getting to as well is that the developer are helping the business owner a lot on that journey by explaining, okay, what's out there, what's an API, et cetera. And when it comes down to how do you see, okay, if your API products are for business people more or for developers, I think it's pretty easy. If you can pay by a credit card and get direct access to the API, then you can say, okay, you have developer-enabled APIs, API products. If there's a contract to be signed, uh, if you need access to stuff, then it's maybe something you would need to talk to a business owner about first. Number three, it's easy to fall into the utility trap. And what do I mean by that? Let's have a look at one of the first APIs we built at Swisscom. Um, I've changed the name to, to English, so IP to zip, zip code, so postcode. So pretty easy API, really. You would take um, an IP address of the user, um, and then you would be able to work out what the zip code is, right? So being a um, telecommunications company, we were able to work out, okay, where is this person? Brilliant API for a developer. They loved it, right? You know, So there were millions of daily calls, but no one ever thought to make a product out of it, right? So this is you know, back in 2012 or something. So it was a massive cost in terms of um, uh, number of calls on the, on the platform, but we didn't have any revenue, no target market, no business case, but it's a fantastic utility for a developer. Fast forward a few years, and, and then we're into sort of more this payments API, which was my API. So not nearly as many like calls. The vanity metrics weren't as great, but we had a uh, revenue of, you know, target around 12% plus or minus, depending on the business, targeting SMEs in Switzerland. So here we can say, okay, we had this sort of more of a product thinking. So um, and there's a question between, okay, when does an API stop being a utility and start becoming a product uh, and vice versa? So looking at, you know, having a, a good look at your own APIs and saying, okay, are they a utility or are they a product? Activation is difficult. It's a tricky one, right? So you've got in any digital product, so even outside of APIs, you, you have the standard pillars of sign up, activation and subscription. So sign up is basically the moment where a person signs up for an account or a free trial. So if they're if they're in an app store, they download the uh, they download the app uh, and sign into it for the first time, right? So for an API, it could be someone signing into your developer portal. Activation is the moment um, the person can see the value in in your product, right? So. Uh, again, if it's an app, so they're browsing around and, and you really want to have a very fast time to activation. So they're using the app and they say, oh, okay, I get it. This is it, right? So, so that's the difference between the two. The activation is that eureka moment. So it, it's, I've got a problem, you know, as a consumer or a business person, and I can see, okay, this, this product is, is, is solving that problem and that's the activation point you can't go to the next step which is subscription i.e getting the the wallet app before you've had that activation moment think yourself as well you always try an app um before you buy it and it's no different with apis the the, dif the difficult part with api products is um Addressing again this, this fact that there is no GUI, how do you quickly get the value proposition of an, an API uh, there to, to the end customer? If, it, if, if it's a developer using your API uh, or is the decision maker paying for the API, um, then we have quite a few things in our toolbox. We've got triad functionality, great developer experience with documentation, et cetera, uh, code examples. So I think we're doing pretty well there. If the persona looking at your API product and wanting to purchase it is on the business side, um, things get a little bit trickier to get that like activation point where they say, yeah, this is what we need and subscribe. Uh, I have an idea for that. Um, I'll present it in the next section. Product managers hate APIs. Well, 
you know, um, what we've seen so far is that, you know, product managers, there haven't been any product managers with 20 years experience come across and start building API products, right? Uh, if you know of any, if you are one of these guys, then, then please let me know. I'd love to learn from you. But unfortunately, I just don't think there are any classic product managers who say, okay, I would love to work on an API product. They sound great. <laughs> uh, you know, we have API product managers. You know, they exist. They they come more from, okay, maybe like, you know, the deeper technical domain and retrain, cross-train into being an API product manager, um, or maybe it's some sort of a business guy who, who comes across. Um, but there are very few, precious few API product managers. I, you know, looking in my community, uh, I know a few API product managers, but not many. We think about them the wrong way. So we say, okay, uh, if it works internally, then we must find someone externally who wants to use it, right? And this is this inside out thinking um, that it causes problems when we try to make them as products, right? Because in order to have a successful API product, we have to think more outside in. So we have to actually step outside of the organization. We have to actually find problems um, that we can solve with digital products and then think about, okay, then what APIs can we produce? We don't have an API strategy. API products are difficult if we don't have an API strategy. So this is historically how we used to do it. Some organizations still do it this way as well. It's this, if you build it, will they come? Uh, you know, mentality, right? You, you build the API, you put it out there and you expect developers to sign up for it, but they just don't, right? And again, it's because you've missed the point. You've missed the uh, solving the product problem part. So what kind of API strategies are there? Well, I put some down here. API first, right? Um, natural successor to the mobile first. So it was that we we were starting first with mobile and we moved on from that and said, okay, now we start with the API and everything forms around the API. We can say API only in which case, so a lot of enterprise companies that build APIs for external consumption you know, treat the APIs this way. It's API only. They they say, okay, um, you can consume this. This is what it does, and there's no kind of supporting console or anything. Where I see like the real strategic values in this like API led part, um, which is where you say, okay, you know, we are an API company, uh, and we build everything around the APIs, uh, including like you know a dashboard console to support the API, etc. And you know some examples of mature API-led organizations. Surprise, surprise! Stripe and Twilio and SendGrid, etc. Right. So these are the ones that we've been talking about for a long time now, and it's great to have had Jeff on the conference at uh, this time. Really, really enjoyed his uh, talk earlier. So, why I would like to ask, you know, in addition to these, you know, mature examples that we're seeing, is are, are there any more? Are there any examples from, for example, traditional enterprise customers who um, who have had great success with their API products, but they haven't really yeah, broadcast it to the outside world? We'd love to hear that. We'd love to hear about an enterprise that you know became API led um, in the future. Um, so yeah, this is kind of the question to you as well. You know, is your organization API led? Um, if it's not, it's going to be hard. It's API products are hard. That's what we're here to say, right? Um, and you're going to have an uphill struggle if it's not an API led organization. So let's move on to to the next part then. So here we're addressing, okay, how could API products be easier? A good API product should answer the following questions. So there's, there's four parts to this. What market are you targeting, right? So we've, we've not started with, okay, what does the API need to do? We're, we're starting with, okay, who are we targeting uh, in terms of, you know, is, is it a particular uh, region? Uh, are you targeting a country? Are you targeting uh, developers? Are you targeting uh, fintechs? What, what's the market that you're addressing? Um, what problem are you solving? This is the most important question any product manager needs to answer. What problem are you solving? Um, if you're not, if you don't fully understand the problem you're solving, um, you're not going to have a good API 
product. If you can nail that, if you can find, okay, a problem, especially if you have a existing customer base and you can talk to them, right? Go and talk to your customers, speak to a hundred and say, what, what is difficult about working with us? What problems do you have? And instead of about solving those problems, if you do that, your organization will love you. Uh, what does the product do? Yeah, pretty clear, but you need to be able to also talk to the rest of the organization, to your stakeholders and say, okay, this is what we're doing. This is the product. And also very important is to be able to explain what the business benefit is. So um, if the rest of the organization is going to use anything other than just being uh, these crazy IT guys, they you have to be able to you know, describe what the business benefit of your API is in terms of, okay, you know, millions of uh, euros, dollars, revenue, preferably billions, but uh, let's see how that goes. Hire more product, uh, API product managers. We can definitely do that, right? Hire, train, more likely cross-train these API product managers, um, bring them up to speed. Um, we need to do that in the industry. We need more API product managers who understand this like abstract API, but can make it more tangible in the form of a product. You can follow a defined product management methodology. We, we've got, you know, Mariuka talking about um, her API op cycles. Uh, that's definitely something you should take a look at. There are other, you know, product management methodologies out there. There's like, you know, hundreds of them. You can do all sorts of product management training. And API product management isn't really that different to regular product management, if we're being honest. You just have this more abstract thinking element to it. Work with your stakeholders. Um, so yeah, is there a stakeholder alignment for your product? This is the first one, right? Um, so I think maybe Claire coming up is going to talk a little bit stakeholders and, and this kind of thing on the business side. Um, if the stakeholders in your organization don't understand what you're doing, um, you won't be successful. Um, and could you help your organization to be API led? Could you, could you evangelize the whole API story within your organization? Um, and this would make API products easier, of course. This is a good one. I, I was talking about it earlier as well is at Swisscom, we found that when we were talking, you know, especially internally to internal project managers who we were hoping would use our APIs, we would talk about APIs and their face would just be completely blank. They had no clue what we were talking about. Um, so we built a demo app and every, every squad that was working on their APIs could just add it to the demo app. And it was a bit of a Frankenstein thing, but it worked. And, you know, instead of, uh, you know, trying to, explain to somebody what an API was and and them conjure up this abstract thing in their head. We would just like demo demo this app that was running and say, look, you click here and, and then magic happens and you get this app. And they're like, oh, okay, I see. And it was nothing that you would uh, we would have shown to a customer, but you could also build a customer facing um, app. Your developers will love to do something outside of APIs as well. It's definitely something that we should do more of. Um, find examples of API products that work for organizations your size. It, it comes back to what I was saying earlier as well. You know, what's out there? What's actually working? So, you know, it could be in your in um, for organization your size and in your industry. It could be there's a lot of uh, API products, but you know, try and try and work out okay if they're being successful and, and ask those uh, core product management questions that I presented earlier. What's what's the target market they're addressing? What what's the uh, problem they're trying to solve? Are they making money from it, etc.? So these are definitely things we should be doing. So as I start to wind down here, I would love to create an open list of API products, right? So, so I have this list open. Anyone can come and see um, what API products are out there, right? So, yeah, to, to really see, okay, what, what are the successful API products? Who's behind them? How do they work? Um, and, and get them a little bit more out into the open so that we don't just have always the same um, uh, examples, right? So we can go to a big list and say, look, all of this stuff is out there from, you know, traditional enterprises to startups, et cetera, and see, okay, what, what's successful. Um, so if you, if you have an API product that you love or you've, you're working with, uh, just drop me a mail um, or 
connect to me on LinkedIn, etc. And, and we can just talk about that. And um, I'll, I'd like to get this this list uh, out once we've got a few candidates. I already have a few, um, but get that list out there so people can start to to see that. Yeah. Yeah, Helen, thank you very much. Uh, and actually, you was quoted by Adam Devander yesterday about like what people, especially tech and developers, want. They want to express what you think or explain how to do stuff. And why products are so hard is actually a title that was inspiring him yesterday about being engaging. So thank you for that title. So we, we have a uh, so I'm looking at all the networks and we have a first question like how granular should an API product definition should be? should the api product definition be um well you know for me i see api product uh, as being potentially multiple apis um combined together to to solve a problem right so in terms of granularity there there could be um also multiple versions of the product as well so small medium large you could have like enterprise versions of a product or with different methods uh for example from an api so you get to post something in one version but not the other so in terms of granularity um yeah can definitely we, we can definitely take it down to uh, a more granular level so the question maybe uh, uh is would an api created for a particular use case particular use case or user experience can be classified as an api product it, I think that's dependable on depends on reuse rate. So if it's if it's like one use case um, for you know especially one customer, it's not a product; it's a solution, right? Uh, and solutions is something we definitely try to avoid because you know at Swisscom we had a lot of solutions, um, and the problem is that you know each project comes along, requests the solution. It's slightly different to the last one, and you say, oh, okay, well you get your own API, but then what happens is that they have a nasty habit of disappearing projects uh, and then you're left to maintain them you build up a lot of technical debt so you don't want to go down that solutions route but if this like use case is there and it resolves a problem then you really have to look you know outside and say does it resolve the same problem for multiple people then you start to have a um, problem solution fit and from there you can build out to a product yeah, so the reusability aspect is important into, let's say, the productization, let's say, of an API that would just be a solution for one use case, but if actually it has the power to be reused across many part of the organization or the ecosystem, yeah, it, it's it's more becoming a product. This is what you say? Yeah. Yeah. So then, the, the, then you had a question, uh, you had a, a moment about API product managers. They are really rare and, and people want them, but like for people who are, looking for api product managers do they can go on the classic hiring market or do can you train your own internal api product manager what advice you could you could give to companies well i've been headhunted a couple of times only um as an api product manager i, I, I think i still have it on my linkedin profile so there have been a couple of organizations who got very excited to find me uh, I'm not available because I'm doing my own thing, unfortunately for them. They, they were quite devastated uh, because there are hardly any API product managers out there. So um, if you need one, cross train, right? Um, I mean, product management for a lot of people is a really interesting step up, you know, from especially you know, software development into product management is really interesting. Um, anyone thinking about doing that, I can recommend it. It's really, really interesting. Yeah, and I invite people to type API product manager on LinkedIn. Let's say over the years, we have more and more, but uh, uh, still, it's, it's, they're all in uh, hired, right? So uh, yeah. you have to <laughs> you have to do the work so they, they move jobs. And they, there is none that is available. Um, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so maybe a, a, a last question. Does an API product is always tied with monetization? Not necessarily. Um, I, I think if you look at the business objectives for the product. Um, it's not always monetization, right? It would, would be nice, you know, if we have, you know, some API products that are, you know, getting the billions in as great showcases, but a lot of times, you know, API products can also be very strategic. So it's locking in your customers into your existing platform. 
um, or you know, even simply reducing costs for the organization. That's what we see as like a classic one. But it's not always about monetization. It's about the the, the business strategy for your API product. Yeah, thank you, Alan. Uh, we reached the time perfect timing and answering all the questions. We let you enjoy okay. this beautiful real background from the oh, Finnish yes. uh, space. We let you enjoy your uh, <laughs> enjoy your presentations, right? And uh, you, yeah. yes, we will we will uh, for sure see you in other EPS conferences. Yep. All right. Speak soon. Thanks. Thank you. Enjoy. Okay.